recording now and it says that it's recording so that is a good sign okay <laughs> so down to business so welcome everybody uh, this is very much about uh, how to use YouTube um, for and it's of course geared for tourism businesses as well so I can see here on the attendee list that we've got people from all over Queensland, which is wonderful. So welcome, everybody. And from the chats that we were having just before, we've um, got a good good suite of different businesses. So, um, yeah, beautiful. Welcome, welcome, everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the webinar, it goes for about an hour or so, and the idea is that Ooh, that's not a very good noise is it sorry just making sure I can work this lovely computer here there we go okay so so the idea is that I can't always see the questions that you might be typing um, because of the way that it's set up but you're welcome to ask questions whenever you like now I've asked Sarah who's um, obviously works for TEQ and is based in Brisbane um, just to keep an eye on the questions and she has permission to interrupt me whenever she likes if there's something important that needs answering straight away <laughs> or if there's any technical issues and I fade in and out um, yeah so Sarah Sarah's on to that for us so that that's wonderful but please just feel free to type in the message whenever you like. So everyone is muted and the reason that we've done that is just simply for uh, so we don't use up too much of our broadband and it's a nice clear message for you all. And of course near the end uh, we'll turn off the recording and we'll get stuck into some questions. Okay so today the agenda is as you can see it's what is YouTube. It's also we're going to be looking at creating an account and we'll look at content that works, where else to place that video as well, and where to find more information. So that, that's a pretty broad, broad look at what we're going to be doing today. So I appreciate that quite a few have probably had a fair bit to do with YouTube, um, particularly for um, personal reasons. It's good fun to get on there and have a look at all sorts of different things, but today is very much focused on business for YouTube. So. For those that don't know, video um, YouTube is actually a video uploading and sharing site and it is what we call a social media um, and that simply means that people can interact and share and leave their comments. So we do class it as a social media but it's very much for entertainment and education. So uh, what, we're, what we're looking at here, just go back one, what we're looking at here is the home screen. And you can see up the top there, there's, there's an ad for a car. So that is just an ad and you can actually close that ad if you don't want it up there. Um, in the middle, there are videos and those videos are actually recommended for me because I'm, I'm logged into this page. And um, it's a lot of online marketing, which shows <laughs> what my focus is. On the right hand side, there are recommended channels um, that I could follow. It's kind of like following a Facebook page. Um, and it's based on previous viewings. On the left hand side is the menu and I'll explain what that menu is as we as we go along. And also uh, there are channels underneath it that I have subscribed to as well. Again, a lot of them are online marketing kind of things. So watching a video and again this would look very familiar to most of you um, this this is what it looks like when it's watching a video this hap happens to be a video about adwords um, and of course you know I'm sure most of you know that you can watch video on a computer obviously you can can watch the videos you can watch them on TV even you can watch them depending on your television on tablets and uh, other smartphones and of course, embedded in websites. There's lots of different places that these videos are going to appear. So this here shows how many people have watched the video. Um, you can see there uh, 412,000. So lots of people have watched that one. And it also shows likes and dislikes as well. So it's not like Facebook where it's just like. In this one, you can actually dislike it as well. And underneath, there is uh, space for watchers' comments. On the right hand side it shows other similar videos that, that they think I might like to watch based on the video that I'm watching now and the videos that I've watched previously. 
So it just depends on your interests. And it's very much based on keywords and descriptions and I'm going to be talking a fair bit about that as we go along. So just some information here. There's a really, really cool site that is called socialmedianews.com.au and it has, um, well, it has the latest information on social media stats for Australia. Sometimes Australian stats are really hard to find, but this one, the latest stats that they have is April, so it's, it's fairly new. And it shows you here clearly that YouTube is number two. So it's very, very popular in Australia. And so if, if your market is largely domestic, um, that's, that's obviously a really important consideration. And for other social media as well, if you're trying to decide other social media that you should be involved in, this is a great website. It also shows what's trending up and down and what's stable as well. So interesting reading on that one. So I'd encourage you all to jump on that. That. So it's called, just for those of you that missed it, it's called socialmedianews.com.au. Alrighty, so an overview on YouTube. It's been around, it's actually been around since 2005, which I um, it was quite surprised that it's been around for quite some time. It is the second largest search engine, so it's second only to Google. So a lot of people just jump onto YouTube. They bypass Google, jump onto YouTube and do their searches. So it tells us that a lot of people prefer to find their information um, via video. Users, of course, as I've mentioned, can upload, view and share video. And there's more than a billion users per month, so unique users, that means individual people. Uh, there are, um, yeah, 24% of it is viewed on mobile devices, so smartphones and tablets, and that is growing all the time. 72 hours are uploaded every minute. That just blows my mind. You would never, if you wanted to sit and watch every YouTube video, you would never, ever get through them all. There are just too many. And it reaches 62% of travel enthusiasts, which is a really important stat for us in the tourism industry. And YouTube watchers are 14% more likely to be travel enthusiasts. So there's some great stats there about how powerful it is. There's also some really nice stats on this next page. This is um, provided to TEQ from Google themselves. And uh, Google has a massive share of the search engine market. So we do talk a lot about Google and that's because I can't remember the latest stats, but it's 90-something percent of people in Australia use Google. Very, very high. Okay, so what this information here means that um, it, it's about the, the process that consumers take when they're deciding on a um, travel destination. So the, it actually says that 66% of people um, watch video when thinking about taking a trip. And then when choosing their destination, 64% of people and 62% of people use video when they're looking for activities at a destination, 57% um, when deciding on a com and when deciding to book, 34%. And that's, that's still a very significant number. So a lot of people are using YouTube and I know yourselves when you're when you're deciding on a holiday for yourselves you're probably doing exactly the same thing so some really interesting statistics there so this this slide here basically tells us that the the trend is increasing so it's only going to get more and more so over time um, you can see here uh, the leisure travellers, where it says leisure travellers down the bottom. Um, it, in 2009, it was 14% and now it's up to 21, or last year, in 2012, it was up to 21%. And also business travellers are even more, which I found a little surprising, but they, um, yeah, big on YouTube. So that is good to know. So depending on who your target markets are, uh, they, um, yeah, there's some interesting statistics there. And also 89% of leisure travellers watch video online and 93% of business travellers watch, watch online video as well. So uh, um, they, must, they must have more time than me. <laughs> but, yeah, interesting statistics. So the types of content, the top five types of travel videos watched by travellers 
you can see here that 62% of videos are um, either hotel, cruises, tours, attractions, etc. So uh, what, what we in the industry would call product videos. 58% trip reviews from experts. So that's actual people that, that um, yeah, they spend their time travelling around and they actually rate and review and put videos up. Videos from travel-related travel channels, so things like a Lonely Planet or TEQ's channel. Uh, trip reviews from people like me, 56%. And um, so that is the, the everyday, everyday people like you and me and videos made by people like me. So what that means, trip reviews are obviously reviews about the products and videos uh, may, may or may not be viewed reviews they could just be someone sunning themselves on the beach so it's it's really big in travel so you really must be in this space so online video sites prompt travelers to book which is which is exactly what we want to hear in um, our industry the the travelers who watched online video while planning travel the percentage who say they were prompted to book as a result. So the leisure travellers, 45% of them were prompted to book. So can you imagine if you had a video and you popped it up there and it was a good video, 45% um, of them may well be um, prompted to book. So, yeah, quite impressive their conversion. It doesn't always happen for every video, of course, but that's just generally speaking. Um, business travellers even more, not sure why, maybe time poor. Who knows? And the affluent travellers. So depending on who your target market is, some really great statistics there as well. I promise I won't go on about statistics too much longer, but they are really interesting. Okay, so you probably know this yourselves, but uh, videos showcase your product better. And this little snippet here is out of the ATW, ATDW e-kit which I'll be talking about a little bit more. But essentially what it's showing us is um, text is not that interesting. It, it's useful definitely for information, but it, it's not, I guess, visually appealing. And in fact, only 10% of people read the text on a website. Most people really just skim down through it. A picture, of course, as we know, speaks a thousand words, um, but video, you're actually able to show them what your product is really like and I don't know how many tourism businesses I have actually spoken to and they just say to me I just wish the customers would really know what it's like at my property and um, this this is pretty much the way to do it so we're very very lucky to be able to to use YouTube for this so what I'm going to show you now is setting up YouTube and I understand that everyone's probably at different levels of where they're at with signing in, but we'll, we'll just go through it step by step and um, I promise I won't take, take too long going through some of the, the more basic bits for those of you that know how to do this. Okay, so what we have here is um, this is setting up YouTube. So this is the, the home screen once again and there's a button over in the top right-hand corner and it says... Um, sign in so you just press the sign in button okay now this is where you have a couple of choices so for those of you that already have a google account uh, you can sign in using that account if you don't have a google account you can can start up a new one so Google account allows you to log into all sorts of different um, Google products online. So the most common one being Gmail, and in this process will actually give you a Gmail address. There's also calendars and there's Drive where you can actually put files up on the internet. Google Plus, of course, which is social media, AdWords, Analytics, Reader. It goes, it goes on and on. There's heaps and heaps of them. But Google actually has some non-Google named products as well, like um, Picasa and Blogger, etc. But YouTube is actually owned by Google. And so you need to log into Google to get into YouTube. So, uh, yeah, it depends whether you've got a login or not. 
and it doesn't you might say oh well I want a separate one for business that doesn't matter there is a way to actually have your business as something quite separate even though you're logging in under your account just like in Facebook you can have your own Facebook page um, and you can have a business one and uh, the the content doesn't transfer across okay so this this would look fairly similar to to pretty much everyone who's ever had to sign into something online the um it's it's a, a typical process so it does actually want your details not fake details so um it's you might be tempted to put in your business name with a fake birth date it does actually want your own details um and where it says choose a google name you're actually choosing uh your gmail address there while you're doing that as well which is just another email address for you so um, yeah important to to choose something that is um, um, yeah other people can see okay so yeah fill in the information and then this is the second half of the information there's a thing that we call capture and it is spelled like that <laughs> c-a-b-t-c-h-a but we call it capture and that is designed to stop robots from coming in and creating their own accounts and using it for bad purposes. So it's just trying to work out if you're a real person because those funny words there, Ab Abadia and calculation sort of, um, only you can, read, you can read those if you're a human um, to a computer. It just looks like a picture. So you just have to type in those words and if you're anything like me, get them wrong a few times and have to have another go. <laughs> Some of them can be really hard. If you really struggle, you can press the little listen button and um, you can listen to the words and then type them in. So this, this here is very much about the terms of service and I won't go too much on about the terms of service, but pretty much what it's asking you to agree to is that you are responsible for what you put up on YouTube. And it actually says, and I'm certainly no legal person, so feel free to look into this yourself, but the way I understand it is you still own the content that you put up onto YouTube, um, but they are allowed to distribute it anywhere. And you can't upload anything that you don't own. And by that I mean, um, say, a commercial that someone else has produced. If you do get a commercial that, that uh, say, your local TV station has produced for you just before you start producing it, just have some sort of agreement that you have rights to be able to share it because, um, yeah, a wasted opportunity if you can't put it up on, on YouTube. And, of course, TEQ allowing you to upload videos that they have helped develop as well. So, um, yeah, just just make sure that, that you do have the rights to share them. You're also agreeing to the Google privacy policy and that effectively is agreeing that it uh, Google – the default setting is that they will actually track you and see what you do online, but then they will actually provide co provide content to you that is um, appropriate for um, the kind of things that you're interested in. There's a whole other marketing category. It's called remarketing or retargeting, but we'll save that for another day. Okay, so you agree to the terms and then it's time to choose a profile photo. And that can be that can be anything they prefer if it's a photo of you, but your choice. And you can of course change it at any time, just like you can on Facebook. So your Google account is set up. That's pretty much all you have to do, um, and it's just effectively saying welcome to Google, um, and you automatically has signed you into services such as Google Plus and Calendar and Gmail. Oh, all sorts of things but what happens next is it flicks you through back to YouTube and that's where we want to be so you just go through a quick process which is welcoming you to YouTube and it's suggesting channels I usually just press next on those because the channels they suggest are not things that I really want to follow but you can go exploring after and follow some channels that are suitable to you And of course, this is your home page. So this is you. The difference is up in the top right hand corner is that we're actually logged in. And this is a fictitious person called Benny King. Alrighty. So the next thing to do is press the upload button. 
and you will see um, it says dashboard, video manager and analytics and if you press on the dashboard this is a little version of the dashboard that you will see and I'll explain some of these components as we go through but the one that we want to press on now is um, my channel and so we press on that and this is where it gives you an option uh, to set up a channel and the channel is basically a place where you house all your videos um, that there are three different options with setting up a channel so I could set up the channel here as Benny King and have it as Benny's personal page um, or I could set up a YouTube channel that is still uh, a public page but it might be um, Benny Boy's tricks or something like that who knows <laughs> but uh, the um, the one that you want to press when you're in business is the bottom one which is a little obscure and it says to use a business or other name click here and that's where you want to be so the next thing to do is to choose a channel name so I've popped uh, Jenny uh, Benny's B and B in there, but that's that's not really a very good use of a of a name. I'd probably um, suggest if it was say a B and B accommodation, you'd be better off putting something like Benny's B and B accommodation, Longreach Queensland, something to that effect. Just use what you can to actually explain what your your business is about through your channel name. And another step in the process is adding channel art. So um, cust customising your channel is pretty much what we call it. And um, it's like a cover on Facebook or, or a banner that you have across the top of many websites. Um, but before you click this button, it's a good idea to have a, a hero shot in mind. Um, these days social media has forced us to have a whole different suite of photos and images that are different shapes so so uh, yeah lots of call for little square versions of of um, either your logo um, or a picture and lots of call for really long ones as you can see along the top here so you might have to rethink some of the photos that you have maybe consider a photo shoot or getting a graphic designer to put together something for you in this case you can actually have a, um, a logo or a slogan or something to that effect um, overlaid over the photo so that looks really good if it's aligned with your branding so there's a nice opportunity there for some really serious branding okay so you press add channel art and there's an opportunity here to drag the photos so for those that are um, Mac users it's um, pretty standard thing that we do is drag photos and drop them in there for those that are um, on Windows if you're not comfortable doing that you can select a photo from your computer the, the way that we've always done by pressing on that blue button and going and finding it in a file and then just upload it just like you would would anywhere so that's fairly simple and of course you have the chance to adjust the crop as well. So what it's saying here is that your channel art is going to look different across different devices. So you can see here the photo that I've chosen is not a great example. It's a, um, so it shows you first of all what it looks like on a desktop and really it doesn't look like anything much. Shows you what it looks like on TV because as I said before, people can watch YouTube on TV and this would be the, the cover to my channel. And it also shows you what it looks like on a mobile device. So, yeah, important to get that cover shot looking, looking really, really good. So then, of course, once you've adjusted the crop and you've aligned it the, the way you want, you can um, press, press select and it will look something like this. And, yeah, this is the bare bones of a channel. It's not looking great, but it gives you an idea of the process of how it goes. And I expect when I jump on and have a look at all your beautiful channels that you'll have lots of gorgeous artwork on there. So one section that I would really pay particular attention to when I was setting up a, a channel would be the about section. So you can see that red arrow there pointing to the about section. And the reason is, just scoot over, that's what happens when you press it is that it's really important for, for Google and YouTube 
to know what your channel is about. So um, many of you might know that um, there's a term called SEO, which is search engine optimization, which effectively means that um, that that uh, that you're easily found that you, that your website is optimized um, for the search engines, and a similar similar thing applies here within YouTube. So um, it's important that in the channel description you fill it out with as much information as you can, and um, you might always call yourself a B and B, for example, but it could well be that the customers call you accommodation they could even call you a motel they could they could call you anything really and you want to use the words that they are going to use and I'll show you a little bit further on how how to do that so yeah important to fill out that information also with links as well the links um, links can link back to all of your social media and of course your website too so include some links in there that'll help google and youtube understand um, exactly what your business is about and other channels as well so you may want to feature uh, your local or regional tourism association or organization um, you may want to feature other operators in your area that you work really closely with. Um, you may also have a sister business that you might want to link with. So it's a good idea to, to share the love and, um, yeah, share other channels and, of course, TQ, TEQ as well. So speaking of which, here's an example of a good, really good uh, channel, actually. It's beautiful. Every time I look at it, <laughs> I'm pretty inspired to come for a, for a visit up to Queensland. So um, it, it's a fairly simple thing really, just has the number of subscribers over there on the right hand side um, next to the subscribe button. It has beautiful quality videos and um, some of them have been made by customers, some by operators and some by Tourism Queensland as well. They've also got a good header that shows where they are well, what they are and beautiful profile picture as well. So um, I'd encourage you to subscribe to, to that channel just to get an idea for what's going on, some beautiful ideas of, of videos that you could do for your business as well. Okay, so that was just a little aside. So back to uploading a video. Now this is uploading a video from your computer. So you just press the upload button. Uh, it's, it's very clear what you have to do there. So you can select files to upload. You can drop them or press select and go and find them. So these are the ones that are already in your computer that have been sitting around for a little while. And of course, the next step is naming them. And it's really important to use lots of descriptive keywords to name them and not just enough just to give it the date, like today's date, which is what it defaults to. So you can actually fill your YouTube video title up to 100 characters, the video description up to 5,000 characters and tags um, up to 120 characters. And tags are just another way to help um, YouTube and Google find what your, your video is about. So you might have a tag of Queensland, accommodation, Townsville, etc etc depending on where you are and what you're doing now of course um, it's often the case that we want to upload from our phones so it, you can jump onto your uh, camera and you'll have you probably have some video there and remember it doesn't have to be really professional video it can just be a quick um, video that you've taken of something that that's happened that's really interesting around your property so yeah most phones these days are high def as well and you can edit on your smartphone too so you don't have to plug it into some amazing um, editing software these days the the ability is there to edit it which is just lovely it's actually making our life easier which is a good thing now there's a, a new ish app and it's called capture it's youtube capture and it's made, it's made it really easy to upload videos from your phone. And it is, I believe, available across all smartphone platforms. And so you can see it there pointing, um, the little red one that the arrow is pointing to. 
and you can upload previous videos that you can see there. There's lots of sample videos that I've popped on there. Or you can take new video. Now it's really important when you are taking video to do it in landscape. I'll show you an example of what can happen if it's not in landscape. It's not so good. So always take videos in landscape if you can. And here on this next little panel here, it says upload to YouTube. This is what it looks like on a smartphone. And uh, you just enter a title. You can add other information in there. Um, you can have your location so it can be a location, turn your location on and it can um, show exactly where the video was taken if you want that, which usually in tourism that's a good thing. Uh, you can share it across social media, obviously, and there's enhancing as well, which is that little wand. So if we go back to the computer, so this is looking at the computer now. Um, this this is where all the, the videos end up, and this is just where I actually play around and show people how to use it. So um, I delete videos off here all the time. And as you can see, the top video there goes for two seconds. So that was very much a, an example of how to use Capture. So it shows, it's got simple analytics down the very right hand side. So it shows how many views and how many likes. And uh, this is where you can make changes. So I could edit the one up the top that says March 26. I could go in and edit that and give it a good name instead of just that date name. So if you do up upload something to YouTube and you think, oh, that's not quite right, you can easily go in and change those videos and make them, make them more appropriate. The next one down where it says Norfolk Plains, that's an example of what happens if you video um, in portrait instead of landscape. So you only really get a third of the screen and, it, yeah, not so good. So, um, yeah, try, try not to do that. It's also where you can say whether the videos are public or private and of course in business you want them to be public so the settings default to public which is good but you see down the bottom there's just an example of what a private one would look like which is Beck's birthday invite and along to the right hand side it has a lock on the screen so um, yeah that that's what a locked or closed video looks like and people will only get to see it if you share that URL with them. There's not much call for that in business. You really want everyone to see that. Okay, so it's it's a good time now to consider where the video is actually going to appear and who is going to search for it. So you can see here, again, a few more stats. <laughs> um, 3 billion views daily, 4 billion hours watched monthly, over a trillion views in 2011. I can't imagine what it is now. And as I said before, it's the second most popular search engine, so second to Google. And it really matters how things are, yeah, how it appears in Google. So video is also an excellent way to rank in search engines on the videos link. So sometimes you do a normal search, which is the first one there, which is everything. But the second search, you can actually search just for videos within Google. And it's actually fairly easy to rank really highly in the video search because not many, in this example here, Accommodation Hunter Valley, not many people um, have used those words Accommodation Hunter Valley to rank highly for their YouTube when they're writing the name of the YouTube clip. So that's why name is, is very, very important. So how search engines look at YouTube, it, it's pretty simple really, the same that they do looking at a website. There's this, well, cute little thing called a web spider or a Google bot and we think that they probably look something like that. Um, but essentially it's um, technology that just crawls down and has a look at um, your website if it's looking at SEO um, but also your YouTube channel, has a look at your YouTube channel and gives you a um, list of the key keywords. It actually says, oh, yeah, this channel and these videos are about accommodation um, in, in Gold Coast. And so it knows what it's about. And so therefore, if um, it does a search, the videos, your videos, if they're about the Gold Coast, will go fairly high to the top. So that, that um, plays out in a search result. And, of course, the customer will see that. So essentially the words that you put 
on your video and your YouTube channel will help you rank highly in a um, both a YouTube and a Google search. Now there's this really, really cool tool, which is my absolute favorite and I use it just about every day when I'm helping tourism businesses to market their business. So it's a little hard to see on this screen, but it's called the, the Google Keyword Tool. So you can see I've put the web address up there for you, www.googlekeywordtool.com and it's free. And so you can just jump into it. You do have to go through one of those capture things where you've got to write the funny words, but you get into it for free. And this is where people that are um, deciding what words go into their website need to go. And this is also where people go for their ad words. So if they're doing ads on Google, this is where they go to help decide um, what should be in their ads. But the reason I'm showing you this today is that YouTube is um, it, th this information is also really applicable to YouTube. So for example, there's an example that I've written in here up where it says find keywords, word or phrase, accommodation Bernie is what I've written in there, which is a town in Tasmania. Underneath it, in the list underneath, it shows you all the different types of searches that are related to that. So we might think that we're typing accommodation Bernie and that's the only choice to type in. But like I said before, it could be motel, hotel, B&B. &B. The other thing it can be is misspells of accommodation. There's lots, lots of interesting things that you can find out about what the consumers are really writing to find your business. So um, it shows you the competition. So that's just simply the um, amount of other um, websites or YouTube channels that are vying for this number one site. Up for this word, sorry, for this number one position in this keyword. And also uh, shows you global and monthly searches as well. So don't, in this case, don't stress too much about the numbers and the competition. Um, just use it to find some nice new words to describe your, um, what your product is on, in the YouTube, YouTube videos. So yeah, one of my favorite, favorite places. So getting found, just to recap and add a few more things in there, a good title is really important and a lengthy description. Links to other social media channels and websites are important and use those keywords, get in and play around and see what people are typing. Um, more than three videos, apparently more than three videos uh, help you cement your position as a, a proper channel. So, so get a few videos up there and ensure all your settings are public as well. That's an important thing. And in any case, they'll default to public, so that is good. So in terms of content that really works, there's um, what we call user-generated content. And of course, it's always great when our customers jump on and say how amazing we are. That's what we want. So in, there's two examples that you can look up. Um, the first one being Early Beach Hotel. That guy there is just jumped in front of YouTube and said how, how much he loves the Early Beach Hotel and says all these wonderful things about it. And obviously to that target market, it's um, really appealing. The second one there is Witches Falls at Mount Tambourine and that's a more staged one, but that is where um, a couple are saying what amazing time they had and, it, and, it's, and it's really lovely. So there's those sorts of things that you can do. Um, and, and that will obviously you can encourage your guests to do these things. You can't make them, but you can certainly request it. So that's, that's a, always a good idea. But um, making your own videos, there are so many things that you can make videos about. Initially, when you're trying to brainstorm some ideas, you can only think of a couple of things to show. But um, I, I can't tell you all the different things that there are. I'll be here all day. But one of the things that I find amazing on, on websites in particular is that there, you can't really tell who um, owns or works at a particular property or attraction or tour. And you really just want to know if they're nice people and if you'll get on and if you'll feel warm and welcome. At, at their particular place. And so um, videos of yourself are a really good one. Cute things like we all know animals, pet wombats and things are always a good thing. I've even seen ones on uh, cloud formations, um, garden, food, um, 
new staff, of course, and, and old staff as well. Someone even interpreting the art on the wall, all sorts of different opportunities. So there's heaps of examples. Just jump on YouTube and look and see what some competitors are doing. And what we want is people sharing um, these amazing videos of yours. So obviously you want them to see them on YouTube, you want to see them on your website, you want to see them on social media, but it would be great if it went what we call viral and lots of people shared these videos. So this is, these here are the reasons that people share videos. So if something's hilarious, they share it. If it's unbelievable, they simply can't believe what they're looking at. If it's deeply emotional, it makes them feel something or it agrees with their worldview. It might make them stop and think, which is, which is always good when we're trying to get them to come on a holiday, or it isn't covered by mainstream media. There's also the dramatic, embarrassing and provocative. I'm not sure that embarrassing or provocative is probably what you want to do with tourism, but these are the things that people will share. So just keep, keep these in mind. Another thing that's really important is the ATDW listing. Now, I'm sure you're all listed on ATD, ATDW, which stands for the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse. And this is the login to my ATDW. And the beautiful thing about being a part of this database is that it sends links back to your website from distributors right around the world. So, yeah. A very very good thing to be a part of and of course as you know you get to put in lots of text you get to put pictures in as well and some people don't realize that they get to put in video too so with the your nice new video um, YouTube channel that you've got uh, you can actually connect that to this listing and I'm just going to show you how so oh, just back one where the red arrow is you can see it points to YouTube And so you actually have three options for uploading the video um, to your ATDW listing. So the first option is, we'll just scoot along, to um, add your whole channel, so everything that's on your channel. And that is probably the easiest way to go, particularly if you've kept your channel nice and tidy and you've got lots of good content on there. So that's, that's a fairly easy thing to do and you just simply put in your YouTube channel there and it goes off and finds it and you have to verify that it's yours. So option, option two, you can see, is you can still put in your channel but you can uh, opt into which videos you want to add. So you might see there it says Gold Coast coming soon. 30 second version um, underneath that it says check to add video so if you wanted that one but didn't want the next one um, you can just simply select so you can be selective from your channel which ones you want to go in there so that may be appropriate if you're um, if you've got things that are date specific and something that happened two years ago isn't appropriate for your ATDW listing and of course you can just upload individual YouTube URLs so um, the, the URL that you see appeared up the top of the page when you're playing a particular video, just cut and paste that and pop that in. So that, that's a good way to do things as well if you've only got one or two to choose from. But in any case, um, yeah, please put some video on there because consumers, as we've seen, absolutely love it. So embedding on your own website. Now this, this is a bit techy, so I won't go into this too much, but of course it would be lovely if you could embed some video onto your website. If you have what we call a CMS, which is a content management system, um, some popular ones are Joomla, WordPress or Drupal. Probably WordPress is the most common one I see these days. Um, it can be fairly easy, but if you, um, if you have a website that's made on something uh, a little bit different, not so common, it would definitely be a case of talking to your web developer. But if you are into this, this kind of stuff, there is a Google Developers center and you can go in and it can tell you how to do it personally I stay well clear and I get someone who's much smarter to do those sorts of things for me and of course there's YouTube advertising as well 
So videos on YouTube are, um, as we've seen, they are watched a lot <laughs> and um, there's a huge opportunity to, to promote. Um, you've seen ads on there. Sometimes they drive us nuts. Sometimes we have to watch them for a few seconds before we can turn them off. You have to be really mindful as to where you want those ads to be and what you want them to do. So you can promote other videos. You can um, link to your website, link to your channel. And there are some amazing success stories with the early adopters for YouTube advertising, but now it's starting to get a little more expensive. But I would definitely encourage you to um, look into that and throw it into your marketing mix. And I know there's a lot of things in your marketing mix, but this may, may well work for you. So in terms of strategy, it's a good idea to... Um, uh, you don't need to decide on every video that you're going to do right here, right now. You have actually got, um, yeah, plenty of time to do that and, and there will be things that come up that, that are uh, you weren't planning on. So certainly um, have a bit of an idea of what you want to view but uh, you want, what you want to post but, um, yeah, don't, don't have it set in stone. But strategically, the standards of your videos you want them to look like they are a suite of videos that they belong together so have similar sound similar quality of video um, you might want to define the number of staff are involved and um, who's going to be doing what that's really important little things like will you have the logo and say in the bottom right hand corner of every video and who's going to put that on there uh, will you have a url that goes to your website will there be a picture that closes you know you see some of those nicely semi-professional ones done that have um, a picture at the end of them and of course uh, an idea of what sort of content as well it's um it is a good idea to have some form of calendar. So even though um, it, it's great to be able to just jump up and take some video of something interesting that's happening that you didn't count on happening, um, it, is, it is wise to have some sort of idea of uh, what sort of content you're going to, to create. And you might have heard some of us speak about um, a content calendar in the past. So simply something as simple as getting an Excel spreadsheet and um, putting down the days of the year down one column the next column putting down the, the special events that you know that are going to happen like Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, St Patrick's Day, local show or festival etc etc the days that you know are going to happen and then you can fill up the blanks with with other ideas that you have so you have a bit of a nicely well spaced um, content calendar so you don't suddenly think, oh, I've got to post something to YouTube and I don't know what I'm going to put on, um, that content calendar will have the answers for you. So, yeah, it'll tell you when, yeah, give you an idea of when to create it, what you will film, gives you an idea. You can also have columns that say where to post the video. You might decide that it would be really good on Facebook and um, Pinterest but not so good on Twitter. You also need to work out, depending on the size of your business, who will create that video as well and what equipment you need. Just stay, um, if you go to your local camera shop or jump onto eBay, you might find a, a really good tripod that would suit your smartphone um, for a pretty, pretty, um, you can get them under $50 and that might help you make your videos look that little bit more professional. So in marketing, we have, um, yeah, the distribution side of things. In this case, we're talking distribution in the context of um, where the video is going to go. And you can see here uh, the typical places that you might like to share video depending on who your source or target markets are and um, the demographics, of course, different videos belong in different places. One that you may or may not heard of is called Vine. You can see that in the middle there, the green one, and that is actually developed by Twitter. It's only been around for a few months and it's a six second loop. So if you find something really quirky that would look good on a six second loop, that may well belong on Vine. 
So have, I encourage you to check it out. It's, it's a little quirky, but um, some of the Vine videos do go viral. Just another thing to add to the mix. So all of this is well and good, but as we know, as marketers, we really need to measure and monitor and see what's working. It's all very well for me to say you should have a video of a wombat, but the video of the wombat people might not like. So it's um, important to, to be able to monitor what's going on. So this is just behind the scenes of that little um test channel that I have and it shows you some some nice um, statistics so there wasn't always available statistics of YouTube but now we've got some a really good handle of what's being shared it will will show you how many views so what's the most popular um, video um, how many minutes people have watched it and whether they've actually liked it or not It'll also show demographics as well and as time goes on and Google gets smarter and smarter and knows more and more about the people, um, it'll be able to show us things like male and female. Some of the cool things that it shows down the bottom and, and you'll find this really interesting when you, when you get stuck into it. This is for the whole channel here but you can look at individuals. Um, so the top playback locations, YouTube watch page, so that is the main page on Google, just looking on a computer. For, for these on my channel, it was 37% of people were looking on mobile devices and um, others embedded player on other websites. So that might mean social media or a website itself. So it just gives you a bit of an idea of what's happening with those videos. And here's another um, a lot of information here. So this is the analytics overview and you can get more of an idea as, as to what the um, activity is over a certain period of time. So it's quite similar to Google Analytics and it rates your performance. So if you've got some, if you've got a board that is interested in KPIs, etc., etc., this kind of stuff is really good marketing information. So you can have some really great reports. And of course, you can nominate the time frame as well. So you can monitor whether a certain campaign or video is, is going really well. And again, demographics, traffic sources, um, yeah, which devices people look on, etc., uh, etc., et in a graph form. And good old Google Analytics. Uh, if you haven't got it on your website, I would encourage you to certainly get that talk to your web developer and um yeah or your digital coach would certainly be able to help you as well so um you'll be able to see within analytics and i'll show you on the next page this is just the dashboard and you can change this around for whatever you like you can have different dates etc but there is one of my favorite um reports within your google analytics is what sites they come from so this, again, is just a muck around site, but it shows you that in this case, the people that were coming into my um, website were coming from Facebook. So you'd be able to get an idea of um, who's actually coming into your website from YouTube. So you get a really good idea of whether things are working for you. So often, just as an aside, usually when I'm looking in tourism businesses, the ones that I see the most of um, is... Um, Google, Facebook, TripAdvisor, and and depending on their activity in YouTube, it's pretty high up there as well. So, of course, um, here are just some metrics, so some measurements that um, may help you if you do need to, to monitor, which I would have certainly encourage you to do. Here are some that may or may not be useful in your reports. So I won't go through them all as this will obviously be available um, to you afterwards, but here, here are some of the things across different social media that would be really useful. There's also, as you know, the, one of the most amazing resources, and I'm really proud to be a contributor to this publication. This is um, the eKit, and it's from the ATDW, and there are some lovely tutorials. There's two of them. So there's this one here, tutorial 47, and there's tutorial 16A. So this one is video for your website. And the other one is YouTube and video hosting websites. 
Um, and there's a few other that, that kind of touch on video as well, but gives you some really um, great tips for um, for both of those subjects and also uh, available in YouTube. So if you're like me and you prefer to watch YouTube while you're busy doing something else to learn things, um, it's a great way of doing it. So speaking of resources, as you know, TEQ have some great resources. Uh, they do have, um, obviously, on their corporate website, they have uh, wonderful things, lots of information about online booking, yield management. The Wiz is uh, another good one as well, which helps with um, booking systems. There's links to the Tourism e-kit, um, Big Marketing Guide. There's a the whole resource center and the better business guide as well so there is so much information on that site it's um pretty much one of the it's the best um state site that i've seen i think in terms of lots of beautiful resources for tourism operators so yes very lucky and of course the digital ready program offers as you know workshops mentoring coaching service and webinars so we've got these lovely people that are available and um, you can call them pretty much at any time or send them an email and they will help you with an online marketing problem. So any questions about this webinar, certainly contact them and I'll give you those contact details in a second. So the Digital Ready Program workshops, you can see here, I won't list through all of them, but there's some amazing workshops that are available and some wonderful webinars as well. So I'd encourage you to... Um, well, here you go. There's the information there. There's um, three Queensland-based coaches, which is Mirko, Susan and Jane. There's their phone number there. There's their email. And, of course, um, on the TQ website, uh, digital ready, slash digital ready on the end, you'll find all that contact information there. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording now and we'll have a look at any questions. So just bear with me a moment, I'll stop this recording. <laughs> 